Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over some book cover changes. Some good ones, some bad ones, some straight up nasty ones, and I can't wait to do it. We're gonna be doing some reacting today. Before we get to it though, today's video has a sponsor. Today's video is being sponsored by Book of the Month, my favorite. Book of the Month is a monthly book subscription service. If you don't have a lot of time to keep up with books that are coming out or can't put in the effort to look into debut authors, Book of the Month has you covered. Thank you, bless you, you're the best. Each month their team goes through hundreds of books and curates a list for you to choose from. They always deliver a variety of genres, books that you might not have had on your radar just yet, and books to bring some excitement into your reading life. Each month you've got five to seven books to choose from. I'm going to share with you the books that I chose this month. First up, I picked up The Kiss Curse. I recently read The X Hex by the same author, which was a book of the month pick from last year. I'm late to getting around to it, but I finally got around to it and I really enjoyed it, so I had to have the follow-up The Kiss Curse. Essentially, we follow a witch who hexes her ex and she doesn't really think much of it. She doesn't think that anything will go wrong, and things get messy and she's left to pick up the pieces. Then in the iconic blue box we've got <laughs> Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. In this we follow Emery, whose life changes forever the night that her best friend is murdered, and the murderer ends up being Emery's lover. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that is a pretty life-altering thing to happen. Emery ends up living a quiet life on this island, running her parents' business, but it ends up turning a bit loud. Things go from quiet to loud pretty quickly because on this island she's going to uproot the history of it and that history of the island is filled with folklore and magic and she is about to uncover it all. I feel like these two books are very telling for the current reading mood that I am in like give me all the spooky books. I need them all. I want to read them all right now. I'll leave more information on book of the month down below in the description. I've got a link down there that you can click and you can get your first book box for only $9.99 using my code JESSE. Now back to the video. Some of these might be book covers that changed a long time ago and I'm just now getting around to reacting to them, but you know what? That's fine. That's okay. I'm late to the game here. I'm late to reacting to them. I actually was like walking in Barnes & Noble the other day in the YA section, and I was like seeing all these different editions of books that I didn't even know had come out, and I was like, huh? These got cover changes? What? I feel like typically I'm like pretty up to date with things when it comes to that kind of stuff, but apparently not. Apparently I'm very wrong about that. Apparently I have been missing out. That means I need to leave my house more often, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather stay inside with my books and enjoy my fictional life that I'm creating in my head. Anyway, today I've got quite a few covers that I'm going to be going over and seeing if they got an upgrade or a downgrade. I'm going to be grading them as I go, so buckle in, let's go. First up, we're starting with the Lunar Chronicles. We've got Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, Winter, Stars Above, and Fairest. I actually genuinely love this new art style and I think the covers are really nice, but I think for me they just personally don't stand out as book covers. It's a no for me, I'll stick with the OGs. I'm a ride or die for the oldies. Don't get me wrong, the new ones, the art is fantastic. These would be like amazing as just like art prints. But they just don't give me that it factor, that showstopper, that book cover slaughter. Not that the OGs really do either, but they're iconic. I really don't like the ones that like break the fourth wall and stare into my soul. Specifically, the Lavana one, the fairest one. I'm like, girl, I don't need you staring in my soul. That's the last thing I want, actually. Keep your eyes on your own paper, okay? Keep your eyes away from me. I used to really not like the OG covers for the Lunar Chronicles. I thought they used to look really cheesy and dated. Even for the time that they came out, I thought they were pretty dated. But over time, they grew on me, and I feel like I grew an understanding for why they went that direction. They're very subtle covers, but striking at the same time. They have kind of a memorable factor to them. These ones feel like they're more so made for people who are already fans of the series. Which works. Take my money, honey. You already drained my bank account in so many other ways, publishing companies. But here, have some more. Stacks on stacks. This series is getting an animated adaptation, so I'm wondering if the art is going to reflect the ones on these covers, which I'd be okay with. Because I do love this art, I'm just not a fan of them being on the covers. I'm gonna give this a D. Next we have the Divergent series. We've got Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, <coughs> Death, and Four. I'm just not realizing that the covers connect. You put them together and magic, voila, this is what you see. You've got a full-on art piece that you can't hang. I mean, I guess you could just like rip off the cover and put it on the wall, but I, I don't know who's doing that. <laughs> I love the idea of these like book covers that connect. We've seen it be done with like the Percy Jackson series in the past, but do people really display them in this way where they're all connected? I get when it's like the spine connects and they make a visual. I think that's really nice and I wish more series did that, but I feel like when the covers do it, I think it's, it's just kind of 
Unnecessary. Why am I whispering? It's unnecessary. <laughs> Since these are like 10th anniversary editions, I'll let it slide. I get why they went with this direction where you're able to see different elements from the story on the covers. I feel like it's specifically really fun for fans, but if this just ended up being an overall cover change, I wouldn't be like as on board with these covers because they're just kind of really busy. Like when I look at them, my eyes kind of go all over the place. And in my opinion, they just don't really intrigue me. Like the art is so nice, don't get it twisted. But with book covers, I feel like you want an eye snatcher, something that's like super memorable about them. Something that will grab your attention. And even like the hollowed out colors that they use just don't pull my eyeballs in. And again, that's what you want. Eyeball snatchers. You want the looks. You want my money. But you gotta work harder if you want my money, honey. It's a C minus for me, I think. The Percy Jackson series got new covers recently. We've got The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian. Hear me out. And I know these aren't like that similar, but they remind me of the OG Lunar Chronicles series. Because they have that like one element that kind of pulls you in. Wham, bam. Look, Looky, looky. It's got that image subject, that one element, and then kind of like a solid backdrop. And I love them. Obviously, it's kind of a stretch that they're super similar to the Lunar Chronicle series, but you, do you see do you see what I'm getting at? Do you see do you see it? Do you, do you? And I love them. Don't get me wrong. I think the OG covers will forever be iconic. Any other cover that comes through after the OG can't touch it. Any other book cover to come from the series will be a flop. Okay, it will never bop as hard as the OGs. I'll never not be a ride or die for the OGs. That's one thing about me. Give us all the cover changes. But I ride for and I die for the OGs. Wow, I didn't realize how passionate I was until I started talking about this. Like, how does it feel to be the backbone of the book community with your stunning book covers? But these are solid change-ups in my opinion. They're like a mix of minimal and busy and I will buy into it. I will probably end up getting these covers at some point. I love that each cover kind of triggers a memory of things that go down in the book. So I think for me personally, I would give these like, I could give them A-. minus. I think that's what I would give them. Next up, the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy got cover changes. Now I have zero attachment to this trilogy because your boy hasn't read them yet. Are we surprised? Are we shocked? Are we losing our minds over that? I haven't read a book series? No way! No way! No. Not at all. We're not losing our minds. We've got Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Days of Blood and Starlight, and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I feel like these covers need to glow in the dark. You should be able to set them on your nightstand and use them as a nightlight. If they don't glow in the dark, I want a refund. Immediately. No glow. They gotta go. Now, I don't really know if these, like, fit the vibe of the story. And as someone who has really no strong attachment to the OG covers, I don't really love the OG covers, but they have that kind of, like, standout factor. Like, the masks are iconic, okay? They're amazing. They're so good. I don't even know if there's actual masks involved in the story. Like, there's gotta be, right? Like, they have to have masks in this series, right? But these covers just, like, give me nostalgia. Like, they just say, let's take a time machine back to 2014. And that's a time machine I'd love to take. I'd love to go back to 2014. I'd give these cover changes a C. The grade that had me passing all my classes. The Red Scrolls of Magic had a bit of a change-up. This was the OG. This is the new cover. I personally liked the original. I kind of liked that it was going in a different direction with the Shadowhunters and, like, giving us something new and fresh other than, like, the same thing over and over again. But the cover change makes sense. It feels like it fits with the brand of Shadowhunters, if that makes sense. Like, this cover doesn't really scream powerful dark magic, and these covers scream powerful dark magic. It more so fits with the Shadowhunter vibe where it's like kind of cheesy, but it kind of works. The new covers are just like overall better suited to the Shadowhunter brand. I'll give it a B, baby. Next, we have the Unwind series, another series that I have zero attachment to. I did start reading Unwind, and I got pretty far into it, but guess who gave up on it? That would be me. Again, are we shocked? Are we? Are we losing our minds? No, we're not surprised at all. What was that horrid accent? We've got Unwind, Unholy, Unsold, Undivided, and Unbound. If you couldn't tell with all the cover reveals I just did, they do connect. But they connect in a way that does not make sense to me. Like, this is the connection. This is them all put together. I have to say, I'm not like a hater of these new covers. Like, I really love the colors they use. But my one gripe here, and the thing that does kind of send me into hater territory, which I'll, I'll admit, okay, this is gonna send me into hater territory. I think the idea of having covers where you put them together to make an image is really cool. However, I think there are times like this where you sacrifice covers having individuality while also maintaining a cohesiveness. Like sure, these covers are really cohesive. They've got the same color scheme going, but when you take them outside of this image, there's no individuality with them. It's just so uninspired and very clearly frustrating me. Like who's displaying their books in a way where they can create this image? No one. If you say you are, you're lying. Pixar, it didn't happen, bestie. This just doesn't make sense to me and I get that it's just like for the 
fans probably like this is more so meant for fans specifically but come on do the fans even want this I don't know I'd be surprised I wasn't looking to buy a puzzle I was just looking to buy a book series I more so understand like the lining up of book covers and making a cover but this goes beyond that like you have to structure it in a way where it's like this instead of this I give it an F I'm sorry fail next up we have the summer I turned pretty trilogy another trilogy that I have not read so I have no attachment we've got the summer I turned pretty it's not summer without you and we'll always have summer it went from mom making us take pictures on the beach to these really nice beachy flat lays I think these work and make sense like the originals honestly they're super bland and boring it doesn't really have any sort of like striking it factor these are nice and fun and fresh and make me want to go to the beach beach let's go get away I give it an A plus next up the throne of glass series is getting a cover change I am so mixed on them so here are the comparisons we've got the assassin's blade throne of glass crown of midnight air of fire queen of shadows empire of storms tower of dawn and kingdom of ash no one talked to me I'm mourning the OG covers ah okay so I understand why they went with this direction because these new covers have this very classical fantasy appeal to them I'm not saying that the throne of glass series is a classic but it's kind of rebranding to give the idea that it is in fact these covers remind me of the new dune covers I feel like they did that on purpose they were like oh dune has this direction maybe if people who have read dune see these covers they'll want to read them like that's my thought process as to why they did this it's this very minimal art style and I don't hate it I'm not a hater I don't look at them with disgust by any means I'm not over here like holding my vomit back but I think there's something powerful about the OGs I'm all about the OGs baby <laughs> does that mean I'm just a sucker for nostalgia probably but I think the originals just kind of stand out where these ones are just kind of like bland and boring but they're still kind of cool just not as cool as these these covers kind of strip the series visuals of its uniqueness and they're just flat is that a good word we'll say flat whereas these ones we've got Aelin serving left and right and also we kind of see the progression of her character through each cover and I love that aspect of it I want to give it an F for flat but I'm gonna give it a D next we have the delirium series we've got delirium pandemonium and requiem I like the new covers a lot more I really like the heart visuals and how they progress and change over the course of each book cover it's like images of my heart as I'm reading a heart shattering book I think they're just really nicely uniformed which honestly like the original covers were pretty Pretty uniformed as well but I still think they're boring but at the same time I don't know what more they could do to rebrand the series and I think that what they did is fine can I give it an M for mediocre I'll give it a C genuine fraud we went from this to this girl chopped her hair off and then got it back with the new cover reverse haircut situation here they really said we were liars is selling a lot so let's make a cover to reflect we were liars throw some kind of watery effect on it put we were liars huge on the top of it and boom we got our new cover. I honestly do not like this new change, so I'm gonna give it an F. There's something just so cool about the original cover. Like, I love just like the scissors and the hair all over the place and that blue, that striking blue. Ooh, 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 I love that color of blue, that shade of blue, so good. And I feel like the original cover just has me asking questions like, why the chopped hair? What's going on here? Whereas this one, I'm just like, okay this just didn't need to happen next up we've got little monsters by Kara Thomas this one makes me so sad we went from this to this we went from super colorful and fun to this boring which honestly like super colorful and fun does not really reflect the story and I get that like the dark aesthetic kind of matches it more but it was just such a bland change so bad so unnecessary are you joking there's still time to delete this I'm just saying also some of y'all still sleep on this book and that makes me very sad for you this one gets an F next we've got the his fair assassin trilogy we've got grave mercy dark triumph and mortal heart I've only read grave mercy so I don't have like a huge attachment here but I genuinely do not hate the original covers I think there's something like charming about them and it makes sense for that era of time when these books were coming out a lot of books back then had this similar feel to them so it makes sense for that time period I guess time period I'm making it sound like it was like 1950s no it was not it was like 2013 2012 something somewhere around there now I like these new covers but they also give me cheap like these weapons do not look as epic as they think they do they look straight out of Halloween store it's giving plastic it's not giving legitimate weapons that I'm gonna go slay with that's my only complaint here I'm gonna say D those are all the book cover changes that I will be going over today I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments what do you think about these cover changes? Which ones do you feel really strongly about? Which ones do you not care about? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! -o.